Hello, my name is Duncan Loxton from UTS Library, and this is a look behind the scenes at UTS ePress. I'd like to start by acknowledging the original custodians of the lands from which you're tuning in from today. I stand upon the unceded lands of the Gadigal people who view our nation and pay my respects to their elders, both past and present. UTS ePress has been publishing open access journals for near 20 years. I've been coordinating journal publishing with the press for a couple of years, so I thought to tell you about how we publish open access journals and talk about the systems we use and some of the issues we encounter. I'll set the scene by taking a step back and looking at the scale of open access scholarly publishing around the world. There are an estimated four and a half million articles published in scholarly journals each year. An estimated 356,000 of these, around 20%, are published open access. Near half of all open access articles are published by small journals that do not charge authors to publish nor readers for access. This fee-free approach is sometimes called diamond open access. There are a really large number of diamond open access journals, an estimated 29,000. These journals represent an incredible diversity of authors at all stages of their careers who may not be a priority for fee-for-service mainstream publishers. UTS ePress publishes six diamond open access journals, though we've published 19 journals over the course of 20 years. I've started with these numbers to situate the press and humble our work, but also to celebrate the contribution we made to open scholarship. As you might imagine, publishing scholarship free of charge comes at a cost. So how is it that we and our journal managers can sustain our work? For the press, UTS Library funds and manages the infrastructure of publication. We self-host the Open Journal Systems Publishing Platform, also known as OJS, that each of the journals use to manage their production workflow. And we also cover the cost of typesetting and dissemination. Our journals are fundamentally independent. They have their own editorial boards and manage their own business models. For the most part, the work of journal managers and editors is subsidized by the many academic institutions we work for. Though two of our journals receive additional funding from industry and academy sponsorships. A peer review is carried out by volunteers. I've drawn up a table to illustrate the basic division of labour between the press and our journals. We outsource our typesetting. We export publication records to Crossref and the Directory of Open Access Journals. We offer journal managers access to identicate to check for text recycling. We manage memberships and accreditation with organisations like the Committee on Publication Ethics. And we preserve our content with locks, clocks and portico archiving services. All six journals have been accepted in industry-leading indexing and benchmarking tools, recognising their editorial rigour and adherence to best practice standards. When technical issues arise, we typically rely on our library IT team to resolve them. We also provide training in how to use OJS and provide advice to journal managers and editors about copyright and workflow practicalities. In terms of staffing, the library resources 0.4 FTE for journals management whilst the manager of Open Scholarship and Copyright has general oversight and looks after finances. We lean on the library's copyright lead for copyright compliance checks and advice, and we also rely on the library's designer for ad hoc journal issue cover design. Our platform costs are borne by library IT. Most of this work is managed using OJS, an open source academic journal content management system. We use OJS because it allows us to host multiple journals and it makes it easy to plug into an ecosystem of scholarly communication. For example, an OJS plugin means we can straightforwardly export article DOIs for registration with Crossref. As for the journals, they manage their own governance, operations and communications. They oversee editorial aspects, including screening submissions, copy editing, verifying references, finding and managing correspondence with peer reviewers and authors, managing calls for papers, and onboarding guest editors, amongst other things. Most of their editorial work is conducted using OJS. The major issues our journals face is the amount of work copy editing requires. Recruiting and retaining peer reviewers is also a constant concern. The major issues for us as a publisher include software bugs, and that OJS is prioritised below other library systems when it comes to library IT support. And, very occasionally, a DOI request for an article we've published will fail, requiring that we track down the problem and correct it. Sometimes the fault will be our own, but it can be out of our control. Not all DOI failures are cause for concern, though. Here are some fun failures we've come across from people using our DOI prefix incorrectly. In the first example, someone's made a very polite DOI request. In the second, someone's got distracted by a poker game. And in the third, someone is multitasking their research. 
with interior decorating. Finish UTSC Press's work to make scholarship available to all people with as few restrictions as possible is unquestionably a good thing. Diamond Open Access is about equity and giving voice to more diverse research. We may be small in scale, but we have so much potential for impact. Thank you.